Uh, hi everyone, in this uh, video I am going to show you how to create a line graph uh, for your single system design. So by the time you're done with uh, collecting data for your single system design, you should have um, a, an Excel file that looks something like this. Um, it um, uh, You may need to put your questions, your, your responses into an Excel file, you can do that. Uh, you can enter the data. Uh, so you're going to need to put uh, the date in in one column or one row, uh, and then each of the questions in uh, in the other row. And then I recommend creating a column for uh, for the phase as well. You can just use an A, a B, and a C. Um, all this will sort of come into play here in a few minutes. So suppose, uh, for the sake of simplicity, I just sort of uh, made up some data here. Suppose we've got a uh, five question item um, or a five question a uh, five item scale excuse me um, uh, and and we score this by by adding it up so what we'll have to do is create a summary variable uh, which we'll do in a second um, I created uh, just sort of an abbreviated version of, uh, of data because um, I just wanted you to be able to see anything or see everything on the screen uh, but it's entirely likely that um, that that your data is going to be much longer or much wider uh, than than what I've got up here. Like I said, I'm just doing this kind of for uh, simplicity. Um, now the other thing is that uh, so to to score your measure, you're going to have to look up the instructions. Um, I can help you with that if you if you um, if you get in touch with me. Um, I've got most of the instructions for um, for commonly used measures. I've got a file of them. Um, but the reason you need to do this is that there are occasionally items that are uh, that are reverse scored, and I put a little description of that down here. In a reverse scored item, the um, uh, the the questions are phrased sort of in in the opposite way from the rest of the questions. So, for instance, uh, most of the questions in a measure might read something to the effect of um, I feel upset when, I feel anxious when, I feel nervous when. So most of the questions are asking about sort of negative feelings or negative emotions, negative affect. A reverse scored item would have sort of the opposite sentiment, which in this case would be a, a positive sentiment. So a reverse scored item might read something like I feel calm when or I feel happy when. Uh, and so what we need to do is transpose each of the scores. So uh, we need to make all of the fours a one, we need to make all of the threes a two, we need to make all the twos a three, and make all the ones a four. Um, now you can have reverse scored questions that, uh, you know, on five point scales, on six point scales, if it's a, um, if it's a five point scale, uh, all that means is that you make all the fives into a one, all the fours into a two, the threes stay a three, um, the twos become a four, uh, the ones become a five. So, and I'm going to show you how to do this uh, very quickly, very efficiently here in a second. Uh, by the same token, if you had a three-point scale, oops, not 23, if you had a three-point scale, all the ones would become a three, the twos would stay a two, and all the threes would, would become a one. Um, but in this example here, uh, what I've done is just created, uh, like I said, a, a sort of... Um, um, uh, some sort of uh, uh, dummy data. Um, just it's it's just just numbers I made up, um, and and the question that we've got to rescale here is is question four. So let me show you how I do that. Um, the first thing I do is is uh, go and add a, a column, um, and then it's typically like I was saying in some of these other Excel lectures. It's typically a good idea um, to um, um, keep yourself organized and and label your your column headings so that you know what it is, uh, so that you know what it is you're doing. Um, and now we could actually go through and do this by hand, but that would be you know kind of kind of boring. You know we could make this two a three, this two would be a three, this one would be a four. Um, and for a you know for a, a short item like this, that wouldn't be all that hard to do. Um, but uh, but I think we should let Excel or ask Excel to do the work for us. And so the formula for reverse scoring is actually very easy. Uh, remember, we start all formulas with an equal sign. Um, and then what we're going to do is, um, let me show you here first and then I'll explain it. 
we're going to take um, the number of uh, possible answer choices, which in this case is four, we're going to add one to it, and so four plus one is five. So we're going to do equals five, and then we're going to subtract from that the original score, okay? And so um, in this case, five minus the value that's in uh, column F5, five minus two is going to be three, right? And then we're going to like I said, ask Excel to do the work for us. We're just going to drag that um, that uh, uh, that little green box so that the so that Excel auto fills um, the the rest of those columns. And as you can see, all the fours have become a one, the threes have become a two, the twos have become a three, so on and so so on and so forth. Now, if you have a five point scale, right? I had this up here a second ago and you need to convert um, the fives to ones, the fours to twos, the threes obviously stay threes, the twos go to fours, and the ones become five, the, um, the formula is going to be an equal sign, and then because you add one to the number of possible answer choices, it's going to be six minus whatever the answer is. Um, by the same token, if you had a three-point answer scale, it would be four minus whatever the original answer is. Um, so again, um, as I said, you can you can do this by hand. Um, it it, um, it it probably wouldn't take you very long, and it, it but that and that seems kind of kind of silly. Um, so I don't I don't think there's there's much of a reason to do that. Um, um, again, if you have trouble with this, give me a call. You know, shoot me an email. I can I can help you out with this. So <clears throat> so we've rescored question four on our our sort of uh, fictitious. Uh, single system design here. So what we need to do is we need to add uh, item 1 plus item 2 plus item 3 plus the rescored item 4 plus item 5. Um, and here's how we'll do that. Um, so we'll create a column. Uh, you, you, can, you, can call, you can label that column whatever you want. Total would be fine. Sum would be fine. And then we're just going to write a formula. So this equals um, um, all of all of these cells, with the exception of, of F5. So this is the sum of C5 plus D5 plus E5 plus G5. Now I'm skipping F5 because that's where our untransposed data is. Um, plus H5, right? So that gives us. 4 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3. Um, and if you want to double check Excel's math real quick, that would be 7, 11, and 6 would be 17. So if we hit enter, we should get, oops, we get the year and not, let me reformat these cells real quick. Um, get the year. Oops, we'll format these as, as general cells real quick. So um, it was C5 plus D5 plus E5 plus G5 plus H5, okay? Um, and so 4, 3, and 4 is 11 plus 6 is 17. Boom, there it is. Okay, um, you, could, uh, you could do this another way if you wanted to. Uh, you could just do... You could highlight these cells here, um, put in a comma, and then highlight these here. Oops, I guess you can't do that. You probably need to put in uh, parentheses. Nope. Maybe a space. Nope. Anyway, I guess you can't do that. wonder why that's not letting me do it. Uh, let's try it again. Equals these plus, maybe it's that, huh, well, I guess you can't do it that way. Uh, if anyone figures that out, let me know. Maybe it's this, maybe I have to do, uh, maybe I have to do parentheses around individual ones. Anyway, it's giving me an error. Um, uh, I paused it real quick to figure out what was going on, uh, and it was because I, I didn't um, 
I didn't include a function command in there. So um, you can, you, if you're going to, um, if you're going to use uh, the the mouse um, or the uh, the little pointer to um, to highlight cells, I guess you need to add a um, uh, a function in there. So in this case, we're adding them up. Uh, you learn something new every day. Um, so we're going to add these cells. Uh, we'll just separate these with a comma plus these cells. Um, again, whichever one you prefer is fine. You know, um, I don't. I guess I probably wasted enough time um, um, writing things out and having it having it screw up on me that I probably could have just written the written the cells out or uh, written the formula out a bunch of times and, and it would have been just about the same amount of time. Uh, at any rate, like I said, use the little green button. It'll autofill, um, and so you can see the, this is the this is the the um, the um, the um, uh, this is the, the these are the values we need to graph um, here like this. Um, now, to make this a little bit easier, you can do a couple of things. Um, I usually find um, oops, I usually find that it's easiest to um, graph the dates. So these were dates that we took measurements. <clears throat> um, um, I usually find that it's easiest to have these numbers um, sort of next to each other. Um, for whatever reason, um, um, Excel just seems to work better. Uh, and let me show you what I did there real quick. So uh, I had to do, uh, when I went to just paste this real quick, you can see it gave me the, the, wrong, the wrong values. I don't know where these values came from. Um, but the thing you can do is, is a paste special. Um, and, and all I did to access this menu was uh, a right click. If you're on a PC, if you're on a Mac, it's a two finger click or a, um, is it a control? Yep, a control click. So paste special and, and, click, uh, and click values. Okay, and then what it does is it, it puts those values in there. Um, so these are the dates. This is the, the, the thing we need to, to measure. Uh, and graphing is actually very easy. Let me show you how to do it. First things first, highlight uh, every or all the information that you want to graph, uh, just like this. Um, go up here to insert. Uh, go over to the chart dialog. Um, you can pick really any line graph that you like. Uh, I prefer line with markers. Uh, and you would end up with something like this. Uh, you can um, you can uh, you can use the uh, the built-in Excel features to um, you know to sort of add in um, um, add in labels. So you know date of measurement. Um, you know like I said, Excel's got all this stuff built in. Oops, too much there. Um, we could add a, 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 a vertical axis label here too. Uh, I won't, I won't bother doing that. Um, and this is a perfectly fine graph. Um, the thing that would, that we would have to add, uh, at some point would be, um, probably a shape of some kind, just a, a line to show us where the, uh, where the, the A phase started and the B phase ended. Um, so you can, you can do that with a line. Um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that's in the right spot, but but you sort of get the idea. And then you can use um, you can use uh, text boxes or something like that to to label the different the different phases. Uh, I'm going to show you a, a slightly different way of of doing this um, that I think actually works a little bit better. So. Um, what we have here, so go back to our, our column with the dates and our column with um, with uh, with the, the 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 values that we need to graph. So the 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 sort of trick to doing this here is to create different columns for the different phases of the study. So the B phase, for example, starts here. On, in this fictitious data on February 8th. So I'm going to move that B phase into a different column, right? So I'm gonna label my columns because uh, it's important to stay organized. 
we'll call this the baseline phase, we'll call this the intervention phase, right? And you can leave um, the, the, the baseline, you know, some of the, some of the cells in the baseline column blank, you can leave some of the cells in the intervention blank. Um, and instead of highlighting two columns worth of information, now you're going to ho uh, highlight three columns worth of information, including those cells that are, that are blank. We're going to go back up to uh, the insert chart or the insert uh, menu again, go over to our charts. Um, again, I usually pick a line with markers. That's sort of what I like. And what this does here is it actually graphs the, um, the phases as two completely separate lines. Uh, and then it labels it for you. So it saves you the trouble of having to put in that vertical line in those in those text boxes. Now, if you had, um, um, if you had, for example, um, uh, an ABC phase, um, which I don't in this in this uh, um, in this fictitious data, but you would just do something like this. You could label it, uh, you know, B phase and C phase, and then again just highlight everything, right, go up to uh, insert, right, and you would get those, you would get those C phases, you know, you would get that, that C phase out there. If you had, uh, for example, a, uh, an ABA design, um, uh, what you would do is you would, um, you would put that, um, that, that return to baseline data back in that same column. And then again, just highlight everything like this. Line with markers, and there it, it sort of labels it, you know, it sort of labels it for you. Uh, again, make sure you label your chart, make sure you label uh, your axes. You can do that right in the um, right in the uh, the Excel menus there. Um, and then from here, you can you can cut and copy or cut and paste, copy and paste. Do a screenshot, uh, but you could copy and paste the the, the chart right into um, right into your Word document. You can put it in line in the text. Uh, you can put it at the end. You know, sort of whatever whatever you whatever you think sort of works uh, for you. Um, you obviously can make this you know whatever whatever size you wanted to. Typically, a slightly bigger chart's easier to read, so I would err on the side of of going uh, bigger as opposed to going a little bit. Uh, a little bit smaller but um, so as I said um, uh, feel free to get in touch with me if this is giving you uh, giving you trouble I'll be happy to help you um, and I look forward to seeing your uh, single system design papers okay thanks for watching